Today we will be discussing England's various land claims. When England developed colonies in the New World, the colonies were characterized by various political, economic, religious, and social characteristics, such as John Locke's new ideas on politics, the extensive slave trade, separation from the Catholic Church, and the diversity of the colonies. First, we will be discussing the various political structures of the English colonies. There were 13 main colonies, none of which were particularly elaborate bureaucracies. The English colonies had more freedom than the colonies of Spain or Portugal. They also had less government involvement than Latin America. This lack of government involvement was known as salutary neglect. The English colonies' political systems were modeled after the Parliament in England and were divided into a House of Lords and a House of Commons. Things began to change, though, after the Enlightenment, including John Locke's ideas on consent of the government, which said that people had a right to choose their ruler and overthrow any unjust government. Economics also played a huge role in migration to the English colonies. The colonists originally came in search of gold, and later when it was found to be extremely profitable, tobacco. Tobacco first came about in Jamestown, and soon became completely necessary for its survival. The colonies were, of course, part of a mercantile system in which the majority of their profits were sent back to England. The colonies also couldn't produce everything they needed on their own, so they had to trade with Europe. By the 16th century, the colonies were actively participating in joint stock trade and the Atlantic Circuit. Another reason the colonies held a lot of appeal for Europeans was the prospect of religious freedom. Despite popular belief, religious intolerance still existed within some of the colonies, such as Puritan Plymouth. This led to the founding of various colonies such as Rhode Island, which was founded by Roger Williams, who was originally from Massachusetts, but was banished for his religious beliefs, such as secularism or the belief in separation of church and state. His makeshift colonies soon attracted thousands. Another similar example of this is Pennsylvania, which was founded by William Penn, who was searching for a safe place for Quakers. By the 16th century, these colonies were no longer tied to the Catholic Church. In terms of English society, there wasn't really a social order, at least not like one of Latin America. The most hierarchical colony was South Carolina, and least was Massachusetts. In terms of interaction between the Native Americans and the English, it pretty much only came down to the English trying to push the Native Americans off of their land, which later led to conflict over land claims. While the lines between social classes of the English colonists may have been slightly blurred, there was a very clear distinction between the English colonists and the slaves. And now, it's time for the Thought Bubble. The Atlantic trade began when Europeans started to realize that they could benefit from trade between themselves, Africa, and the colonies in the New World. Basically, Europe manufactured goods and sent their trade ships to Africa to sell said manufactured goods. In return for goods that Europe brought to places, such as Africa, Europe would take raw materials and goods back to Europe. Some of these goods, including slaves, were sent to the colonies. Sometimes this part of the circuit is called the Middle Passage. In return for the slaves, America sent back various raw materials to Europe so that Europe could produce more manufactured goods. This trade route
formed a circuit across the Atlantic Ocean, thus the name Atlantic Circuit. This complex system of trade between Africa, Europe, and the colonies in America was very profitable and made the English in Europe extremely wealthy. Now time for the open letter. Dear or no colony, what happened to you? You could have been the first legitimate English colony, which would have been great for you because you would have been really rich and famous, but no. You had to disappear, leaving you wear crow tone on a tree, which is more than a little bit creepy. At least you could have left Walter Riley, the founder of the colonies, with more clues on what happened to you or Virginia Dare, the first English person born in America. But you just had to disappear, leaving behind one of the greatest and most well-known American mysteries. Sincerely, Katie. Now, let's look in the secret compartment. Nothing, and I assume the other eight are empty too. Similarly to how there was nothing found in the site of the Roanoke colonies. So overall, the colonies in the New World created by the English were characterized by various political, economic, social, and religious factors, such as the introduction of new political concepts into the government, the transatlantic trading route, interaction between Native Americans and the English, and new religious freedoms. Thanks for watching. Mm hmm.